to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We look at verses 11 through 15. Familiar verses to many of you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11 through 15. The title message is, How to Have Victory Over Sin. How to Have Victory Over Sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that he may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Dear Father, thank you for another opportunity to gather today. It's a wonderful scene that we're able to get together and acknowledge the Lord. And the preaching that we're going to get from Pastor J. Lord, we cherish this opportunity to meet new brethren and the uh, old brethren that we see on a, on a weekly basis. Lord, Father, we thank you for that opportunity. As we listen to your word today from Pastor Jay, we ask that you please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord. And whatever he has to say, Lord, we know that it's from you. We help us to open our ears and open our hearts so that we can really listen to it and apply that to our lives, Lord, whatever it may be, Lord. Whatever you prepare for us, Lord, Father, we pray that you please bless it. And Father, for the rest of the day, Lord, as we... Um, Go throughout the day. Please help us to focus on you. Help us to uh, keep our conversations about you and about the holy things Amen. that you want us to talk about, Lord Father. Please uh, guide us and bless us in every way possible. Bless us for the rest of the day. Jesus Christ, in we pray. Amen. 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 How to have a victory over sin. As a saved Christian, there's some out there, they say that you can no longer sin. There are factions of people, so-called Christians out there, they live however they want, and they think that they don't sin anymore, which is ludicrous, right? But they do get those ideas from wrong doctrine. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. So one thing that you have to know for sure is that as a Christian, you can sin, and you will definitely sin for sure, because you and I are not perfect. First John chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Truth is not in you if you say that you have no sin. That's what the Word of God says. Of course, there's a you know, doctrine of spiritual circumcision. When you trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separates forever. So spiritually speaking, you, know, you can't sin no more. However, physically speaking, you will still sin. Yes. I mean, that's given. And I think this is one of the great truths that you know is that whatever I do, one thing for sure is that I'm going to heaven no matter what. Amen. Whether I commit suicide, I'm going to go to heaven. Yes. God forbid I somehow lose my emotion and kill someone, I'll still go to heaven. Yes. Why? Because my body and soul separated forever when I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, Amen. according to Colossians chapter 2. Then, your sins are washed away once and for all. You know, that's why there are verses in the Word of God, you know, where you can't sin no more. You can't sin no more. Why? Wow, your body and soul separated forever. However, 
you still have thing called flesh. That's right. And your flesh will still continue to sin. That's true. And you have to realize that. You have to put it in your head, right? I have flesh, and I'm going to sin. Yes. Unless you're perfect. Can anybody hear or listening you know, in the, you know, through the internet? Are you perfect? I mean, if you raise your hand, you know, you have some issues that you have to deal with. And nobody is perfect, and everyone will sin. Then you have to get that out of the way. You know, I, I admit that I'm going to sin because I am not perfect, and I have this thing called flesh. You know, that's why Apostle John said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Then... If you know that you're going to sin, then you have to take sin seriously. How are you going to have victory over sin if you don't think of it seriously? How do people have victory against each other, say in a war? Because they study the enemy, because they know the significant issue and the problem. We have a war between Ukraine and Russia. Besides from the resource issues, how can they defeat each other? They have to know each other. They have to understand each other. And it's a lot of times it's information fight, right? That's why we have agencies like CIA and Russia have KGB and all those places, what's their job? They're trying to get intel. If you wanna have victory over sin, first you have to realize what kind of human being you are. First you have to realize who you are. You and I are nothing but a sinner saved by grace. Yes. Which means that we're nothing but a sinner who can sin at any moment, at any time. When do you usually fall? As Christians, you tend to sin when you get comfortable, when you think you're good. I say a lot of times after, say, we have a blowout, revival, or we have, you know, Summer camp, people who are high, spiritually speaking, they hit the bottom very quickly. You know, because your flesh and devil's not going to leave you alone. And then you start thinking that, you know, I'm not going to sin. I sang praise the Lord. I got convicted. You know, I ran around the aisles. You know, I was shouting. You know what? You know, I'm good. Spiritually speaking, I'm so blessed. You know, the things that I used to do, I'm not going to do no more, right? But it's not from a sincere, humble heart. It start, you start thinking like that from, you know, puffed up mind. I know what the doctrine says. I know what the Bible says, right? It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. I'm not deceiving myself. I definitely have sin. But the way you talk about it, the way you say it to others, is as if, you know, you're looking down on those people. Because you think that they don't know, and that you know this truth. And that's where knowledge puffs up, and there's no charity. There's no love. And what happens is that you start going downhill without even realizing it. How many times have you committed sin and you thought you'll never do it. Many times you do and you commit sin when you thought you won't do it. You're at a spiritual high. As in you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you say, you read the Word of God, and you listen to preaching, and you study the Word of God. But when you don't take sin seriously, sin's going to eat you alive. You alone cannot defeat sin. Sin will eat your life. Yes. I mean, that's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. So what are you relying on to have victory over sin? Are you relying on your flesh? Are you relying on your brain? You know, are you relying on your ability wow. to have victory over sin? Then what's going to happen? Eventually, you're going to live after your flesh. Yes. Think about it. You know, I can do all things through me. That's what you're saying when it comes to sin. 
You know, Romans 8.13 says, if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. So those of you who don't take sin seriously, the word of God says you're going to die. You don't hear that a lot from places, right? right? If you live in sin, if you don't get right with the Lord, the word of God says you will die. Yes. God would rather take you home than you become a bad witness for him here on earth. Amen. I mean, that's why the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man so it thou shall he also reap. Yes. If you keep on sowing sin into your body, into your life, Romans 8.13 says, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. I mean, if you thought your next action could kill you, I'm sure you wouldn't do it. If me committing that sin will have me kill, man, I'm not going to do it. I mean, you, are, you do know that the fear of God you know, will help you to live a healthier Christian Amen. life. That's true. If you think that, okay, I'll just commit this sin one last time. That could be the last breath that you could breathe. I mean, you could wake up in heaven just like that if you're saved. And why, why does this happen? Because most likely you're in a backsliding state. Proverbs 14, 14 says, The back, backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. You don't look at things from the point of Bible. You don't look at things from point of God. Yeah. You start looking at things from your own point, your own viewpoint. So what happens? You think it's okay. This sin will justify the end. I have to do this to support my family. I have to do this to keep my relationship. I have to do this and I have to do that. But you tend to forget. You know, Numbers 32, 23 says, But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You cannot hide those sins. You cannot cover those sins. You could try all you want, but God's going to reveal it one day. I mean, that's a scary verse for many Christians. And be sure your sin will find you out. I mean, your sin eventually will find you out. I mean, have you thought about how scary and significant and serious that manner is? Whatever sin that you're committing right now, and I know all of you are committing sin yes. because you're not perfect, and including myself, we all commit sin. But is it to the point where we're waiting until our sin finds us out? Is it to the point where Lord has to really move upon you, where Lord has to really spank you and punish you? It's, it's a very typical relationship between you know, parents and children. You give him some warnings. Hey, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, after you give him like, you know, 10 warnings, it's time's up. You know, it's time for punishment. I mean, Lord is doing the same thing with you. And Lord is much more gracious and merciful than you and I. Yes. And he's giving us chance after chance after chance. Man, do you really want your sin to find you out? No. I mean, you... you I mean, just like, you know, 1 John 1, 9 says, you know, if we confess our sins, his faith and just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from righteousness. Man, you have to confess your sin, get right. Amen. You have to get right. Yes. Man, God is a loving father, but he's a just God too. And, you know, it's a very hard emotion to understand unless you're a father. You know, maybe you're a mother, parent too. When a father punishes his child, do you think he feels good? No. But he has to do it out of love. Yes. I mean, Dr. Rockman had an illustration where he, you know, whipped his boy. And then, you know, he saw him sound asleep on his bed, right? And then he was looking at him. And he's like, man, you know, Lord, <laughs> is that how you feel when you have to punish me? You feel so bad that you had to spank the kid, but you still have so much love for the kid to do his best. Yes. That's how Lord sees you, but you're always trying to 
push him as far as you can. Man, young people, do you push your parents as far as you can? Like, you know what? My mom and my dad is a loving mom and loving father. If I could just push it to this limit, they won't punish me. They'll just maybe yell at me or they'll may, you know, just lecture me. And you keep on pushing it. But as a godly father and mother, when they reach that threshold, when that cup runs over, you have to punish them. And do you think they feel good? You know, there are always cuckoos out there, right? We're not talking about these one-offs out there. Generally speaking, parents do not feel the best when they have to punish their children. And if you understand that as a child, and everybody has been a child at least once in your life, how much do you think you're hurting you know, your loving father in heaven? Each time you commit sin, you're getting closer and closer for God to have to take severe action against you. Because he chastises his children. Yes. Because he loves them. Because he loves you. Then you have to think about, okay, sin is very, very significant. It's not something that I should be fooling around with. You know, whatever it is. Whether it's small, whether it's big. Sin is a sin. Don't play around with it. It's like playing with fire. You see so many stories, right? Someone just plays with the match and that, you know, they throw it away or they're camping and then it burns like hundreds of thousands and millions of acres. Yeah. Do you think when they started, you know, I don't think they thought it would be that big. Oh. I mean, your sin, a lot of times you do it, you don't think it's going to get that big, right? right? You don't think it's going to be burning up the whole village, whole town, or whole state. But if you realize that, okay, if I were to commit this, you know, simple sin, if I were to commit this lie, if you know that that lie will turn into burning hundreds and thousands of acres and kill multiple people, you probably won't do it because my action could actually kill people. Have you ever thought about sin in that matter where, man, if I commit this sin, it not only will harm me, it will harm my loved ones. But number one, it's going to hurt you know, my father, which are in heaven. When a child truly understands that they've done something wrong to their parents, which of the case they cry. They're first mad at themselves for doing it, but they're so sorry to their parents. Like, man, because if you are a, even a, you know, halfway decent parent, your children will really love you. Your children has the, you know, how should I say, they're born to love their parents. You know, they want to follow their daddy as role model. I mean, girls, you know, love their mom, you know. And if you truly understand your parents' love and how hurt they'll feel when you break their law, when you go against them, then think about how much God will feel every time you disappoint him, every time you sin against him, every time you disappoint him. You grieve the Holy Ghost, right? Then you probably will stop and you'll pause and you'll start thinking about it. You know, this having victory over sin is not just about living a holier life. It's about building close relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you only think that having victory over sin is, you know, me living a cleaner life, you know, you got to think deeper. As you are cleaner, as you are holier, you get closer to the Lord. As you are dirtier, as you backslide more, you're going to be further away from the Lord. That's why many of you don't have closer relation with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because of sin is ruling your life. Yes. You're constantly being defeated by sin. Wow. If you have victory over sin, I guarantee you have a closer relation with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Even that little white lie, you're going to stop before you even yeah. do it. 
I mean, you just kind of be like, no way. <clears throat> then if you know that sin is this significant problem in your life, something that you have to deal significantly with all of your heart, it's like you have to fight till death. You know, that's what sin is. You have to have that attitude. You know, I'm going to fight and fight against you, sin. Then how can you have victory? Now, I'll go over quickly. There are five things. You know, first step is to make up your mind. Okay, now everybody, you have to make up your mind that you will try your best to stay away from sin. You have to make up your mind. Like, I am going to stay away from sin. You got you to make up your mind. It's like this. You know, Father, I'm going to stay away from sin. I may fall here and there, but I'm going to stay away from sin. That's like your conviction. That's like, you know, a thing you're going to do no matter what. That's where you're not going to compromise. That's where if your friend tells you to let smoke joint, let smoke smoke or whatever is out there kids do nowadays, right? You know what? I made up my mind that I'm not going to sin. Yes. I'm going to stay away from sin. You know, Daniel 1a says, Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. So the best thing is for you to do is what? Make up your mind to never get into sin in the first place. Just don't do it, right? If me opening that door will cause me to sin or have a chance for me to commit sin, I'm not going to open that door. Simple as that. I'm, I am going to stay away from it, right? So young people, or old people, or in between. If you know going to a certain party is going to, you know, expose you to sin, then don't go. Amen. Stay away from it, right? Oh, it's because of my job and blah, 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 right? Just pray to God that God will, you know, give you a way to escape, right? Like 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You have to stay away from sin. That's number one. Second, if you want to have victory over sin, you have to saturate yourself with the Word of God. Yes. You have to. Like, you have to memorize the Word of God. Yes, I'm sorry, you know, this day and age, everybody's just lazy. They don't want to memorize the Word of God. True. But if you want to have victory over sin, you have to memorize the Word of God. Then you could recite to yourself verses like Galatians 6, 7. You could recite to yourself verses like 1 Corinthians 10, 13 those God's promises, then you could have victory over sin. You know, Psalms 119, 911 says what? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto, according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. How did the Lord defeat Satan's temptation? By quoting scriptures. That's right. So if you want to have victory over sin, you have to saturate yourself with the word of God. Think about it. saturation is like something that will, you know, go inside of you. Yes. Well, you saturate yourself. You have to saturate yourself with the Word of God. Imagine if there is a day that comes where you no longer can have Bible. How are you ever going to remember unless you have memorized the Word of God? So it's not just about reading your Bible, which is good. But you have to meditate. You have to memorize. You could memorize a lot of things. I mean, if I were to ask you about a certain celebrity, like their birthday, probably you know, right? I mean, if I were to ask you about a certain event in history, you probably will remember. If you remember, say, horrible, horrible homicide that happened in the news, you probably will remember. Or if you remember a time when you had a good interaction with somebody or bad interaction, you remember. Because that gets instilled in your head. Because it's important to you. If word of God is important to you, and if you want to have victory over sin, you're going to read and you're going to memorize. Read, memorize, read, memorize, read, memorize. Which means there are so many verses out there. And I'm not just talking about, you know, going through the chronicles and numbers, you know, memorizing those things. I'm talking about verses that will really actually help you in your Christian walk, whatever the situation is. 
when you're dealing with temptation, when dealing with people, you know, salvation verses, it will help you. And whenever you're dealing with sin, you're going to start remembering all these verses. You know, 1 Timothy 6.12, the you know, apostle said, fight the good fight of faith. He said, fight. Then you're going to fight. Yes. Right? And then thirdly, if you want to have victory over sin, you're going to pray and you're going to claim the promise. Amen. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, we just read it. Claim that promise. Yeah. Right? God said he'll give you a way to escape. Then claim it. And that's why in the cases where you're at a job, and, man, it looks like that, man, I, if I don't go to that party, you know, that all this bad environment, I don't know how to, I'm going to do it. God said he'll give you a way out. Then take it. Take that promise, right? Whenever sin comes along your way, whenever temptation comes along the way, you could have assurance that God's promise that there's going to be a way to escape. Then you could have that conviction that, you know what, I'm not going to sin. I'm going to have victory over sin. Why? Because God promised Amen. there's going to be a way for me to escape in 1 Corinthians 10.13. 10, That's third. So you could have victory over sin, you know, by staying away from sin, you know, being saturated by the word of God with prayer and claiming the promise. And fourth thing is that you could reckon yourself dead. Yes. You know. Romans 6, 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the idea is that your whole nature is dead. Then you can't sin. Right. You know. You have to leave your old nature on the cross. Yes. Leave it there. Right? It's like, your, your flesh, you know, old nature is like, okay, let's go have a drink. You know, I need, I need some drink. I need whiskey. I need vodka. I need something, you know, or beer. But you reckon yourself, hey, you're dead. Yes. You're dead. You don't need no alcohol. You're already dead being. You know, stay on the cross, right? Stay on the cross. You're dead. If you understand and, you know, understand that your old nature is dead, then what's going to happen? You know that he can't sin anymore, right? Problem is that old Adam keeps on resurfacing, keeps on coming up. Then you make up your mind, according to Colossians 3, 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Just consider it a dead thing, right? Do you guys want something dead in the cemetery suddenly come out? You know, you'll be scared, right? And then they're saying, okay, hey, let's, let's smoke together. Some dead things, right? <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. You know, I'm going to stay at, as far away from you as possible. Reckon yourself to be dead. Yeah. Dead things can't do anything. Right. You're dead. Why are you trying to do this? You're dead. And then last thing, the final step in order to have a victory over sin is either to fight or flee. You're going to come to a point. Sometimes you have to fight. You know, James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Again, I said 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Sometimes you have to fight. Sometimes you have to fight against sin. You know, sometimes, you know, they're in your way. And sometimes God says, go head on against that sin. You might be at a place where, I mean, unknowings to you, you know, they're serving alcohol. What are you going to do? Are you going to resist or are you going to accept it? For some, it's very easy because you never drink. For some, it's very easy because you never smoke. However, for some, it's the hardest thing. If you grew up in alcohol, if you grew up smoking, if you grew up in drugs, if you grew up in, you know, 
all this immortality, what's going to happen? You're going to have a better chance. It's going to be harder for you to resist. Yes. What does the Bible say? You have to resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You have to fight. It's like, when you first purpose in your mind that I'm going to stay away, then it's going to help you fight. I already purpose in myself that I'm not going to fight. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to stay away. And I'm saturated with the word of God. And I'm praying. You know, just like Nehemiah prayer, just pray right away. Yes. Lord, help me to defeat this sin. You know, give me a way out. And then consider yourself a dead person. Then you're going to be able to fight. And then you could flee as well. Right? Flee you for less. You're just gonna, you're just gonna, you're not gonna even hesitate. You're like, okay, okay if I talk to that person, nothing good's gonna come out of it. I'm just gonna run, right? I, mean, I don't care how they feel about him, you know? <laughs> I'd rather, you know, please the Lord Amen. than a human being, and I'm just gonna run away. Yes. I'll finish with this. Then we have a great example in the Word of God Joseph. You know, when he was being seduced by Potiphar's wife, he just fled from her. I mean, he just ran. Amen. It's like Potiphar's wife, <laughs> after, you know, a few attempts of sedu seduction, right? I think he saw him coming. He just stopped running. He just ran out the door, right? R Lester Roloff said, he may have lost his coat, but he kept his character. You want to keep your character for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You could have victory over sin when you apply these points to your life. Who do you want to please more? You know, loving Father in heaven or your flesh, the devil, or the world? Before you ever sin again, think about who you're going to disappoint, whose heart you're going to break. Let's pray.